Hi, I'm Mark, and we're making butter at Deep South. We're going to start with about just over a quart of fresh cream. And just turn the mixer on high and let it run. Okay, we're to the buttermilk stage. You can see the buttermilk forming on top. So it's starting to separate, separate. So now we've got butter and buttermilk. And it's just a process of washing it and adding salt if you want to add salt. How many minutes? Uh, it took about 12 minutes all together. Okay, next we need to drain the buttermilk. Then you've got butter left, and it has to be washed. You want to get all the buttermilk you can out of the butter. So I use ice water. And it usually takes two or three washings until your water starts to turn clear. And the water's staying pretty clear the third time you wash. So you pretty well got all the buttermilk out of it. And the final step in the process is to add a little bit of salt, probably half a teaspoon or a little more. And salt is mainly as a preservative since this is um, raw cream that we made the butter with. It hasn't been pasteurized. Um, it helps it to keep longer. So you just work the salt into it, and that's all there is to it. And that should do it. And then we've got a butter mold. Don't have enough butter to quite fill the mold, but. And this should be somewhere right around 12 ounces of butter. And there you have it, homemade butter. Okay. <laughs> Things that are off camera. All right, what I'm doing with this is I've taken the leftover whey that we used to make the mozzarella cheese. The liquid and I have sat here and stirred this until it hits at least 200 degrees or boiling right now we're just a little over 200 degrees and it's about to start boiling what we're gonna do with it as you see it'll start to turn white again and it gets foamy and it wants to stick to the bottom of the pan so you gotta kind of watch that what I'm gonna do with this now that it has reached the temperature that we need I'm gonna take it back over to the cheesecloth and the strainer that we use for the mozzarella and I'm gonna pour it through, and what's left in the cheesecloth will then be dry. It'll be hung or just sit there and let it drain until it gets to the texture you want it and it makes ricotta cheese. And then anything that's left over after that, um, you can take and put into a container that's sealed. You can use a jar if you don't have much left or you know, a bucket with a lid or whatever. You can pour that in there. If there's anything left in there, it'll start to make uh, basically a cottage cheese that you can use to feed your chickens or you can just take the whey out feed it to the chickens you can pour it on your plants um, there's a lot of things you can do with it but none of it has gone to waste all right now we will take this nice hot and you can kind of see as it starts coming out you can see that there's 
chunkies. You know, it's not like it was when we made the mozzarella cheese. And it looks like it's going to go right through. But as we get toward the bottom of the pan, you'll see it's a little thicker. But you can tell that it is slow to filter through. So we just have to get it in there and let it filter. Now if I was at home, what I would do is um, we would, once all the liquid has gone through, then we would make a, a bag, tie the tops of this thing together, put it over underneath the cabinet and hang it from like door handle or something and let it continue to drip in there until you get the texture of the ricotta that you want. The longer you leave it hang, the drier it's going to be. Not only do we have ricotta cheese, you have a dumbbell. You can work out. Exercise. Yeah. Pump those weights. I spend way too much time on the farm. Okay, what we have here is the ricotta cheese that is left over from where we made the mozzarella. And it's you can dry it out even more than this if you like, but if you're gonna use it for lasagna and stuff, they want it kind of spreadable, so it's ready to go. And you can just put it in a container, put it in the refrigerator. Uh, you can freeze it if you want to for later on. But, um, so it saves you from having to go to the store and buy your ricotta. There it is, homemade. And we only had leftover of one gallon of stuff for the chickens. And the whole two gallons of milk has been used.